well, when you go up there and, uh, on a day like today and it's fine up there, I often think to myself that God must have been in a very good mood the day he made that place. It's such a, it's an incredibly beautiful place. And every time you go up there, the scenery is completely different. It depends on the type of weather you have. And if it's misty or foggy, and you can actually see the mist lifting and see the mist and the different shapes and the different mountains coming out of the mist is beautiful. It, you feel very near God up there. There's a beautiful stillness up there. It's beautiful. It really is lovely up there. But the walk's very hard. The, it's the walk I hate, not the place. It's the actual physical work. It is, it is such hard physical work. It, it's heavy work. It really, I suppose, it's even heavy work for a man, but for a woman. And I'd never been in a bog in my life before, so I mean, it was, I suppose, twice as hard for me. And I absolutely hate footing turf. It is so, so mundane. You're just standing all these four sods together trying to drive them. And when you look back, they're all knocked again, you know? It's mind blowing. That's what Michael says to me about when I, if I ever complain about the journey up there. Or about Lango when they had to t bring the uh, turf down with donkey and carts. And that must have been dreadful, absolute. And mainly it was the women went as well, you know. And uh, then they would have to come back down home and try and start a fire and bake bread and do all sorts of things and still do a day's work around the place. And that's why I don't like going up to the bog either. When I come back down, I've got to face in and light the fire and the children are hungry and everybody's hungry and everybody's tired and you're frozen with the cold. And, and as I say, at the end of it all, you might need to get the turf out of there anyway. Give me gas central heating any day of the week. I've no pride where turf is concerned. <laughs> the place up there is absolutely beautiful. It is, I mean, when you're up there doing, the, the, the one of the, I mean, if you went up there on a really fine day like today, no, of course it's a pleasure. Anything is a pleasure in that weather. And uh, if you have the radio, and especially if it's the morning and Gay Byrne is on, you see, imagine sitting down with that scenery, listening to Gay Byrne, what more could you ask for? The first Thursday of each month is Fair Day in Castletown Bear. Basically every Friday I go to town and do the shopping and come back home. That's about it. Mm. Do what I have to do inside the town if I want to buy wool or get a pattern or something like that. And we wouldn't go to town for entertainment at all. We would go to Alahees if we were going to go to the pub, which we don't do a whole lot anyway. But if we were going out, we would go to Alahees. He likes to look after the finances even though probably he realises that I would be much better at it, but he's always done it. And I tend no, not to bother about it at all. And it suits him and it suits me. Because, uh, I, well, in, on the one hand, it's a bit unfair, isn't it, really? Because he will make all the decisions about what the money is to be spent on, where, when and how. And things like that. I have no financial worries. I don't know what's going on there, you see. Fox, You see all the ones that I've had to, that they are, their ears are closed. The, it, is, it is much nicer shopping in Castletown from the point of view that you don't have to worry all, about, all the time about your handbag. You can actually have your handbag on the trolley, which is a huge thing. You can actually walk away from your handbag, from the trolley and not have to worry about the handbag. And uh, you can leave the car open. You can leave the ca keys in the car. You can leave the shopping in the car. You can leave the windows down in the car. And you can park the car anywhere within reason, and people are not coming and hooting the horns at you. It is a sheer joy to shop in Castletown. I read that in the paper. <laughs> Do you suppose that happened if you go up? Just have trust make money then. So if you always got the shotgun from now on, anyhow. If you bought the shotgun, I think. <laughs> it's, it's a social outing, really, rather than a shopping spree. You will meet people inside in town Fair Day that you would only meet in Fair Day. Because everybody makes a huge effort to come out on Fair Day, to go to the market. And uh, from that point of view, yes, I like the fair, but not, not the, the plastic things. I wouldn't, I, I mean, I never walk around the, those stalls, ever. I tend to buy what I want to buy when I go to Cork City. So, I mean, I would never buy anything at those stalls. Basically, it's in, you, you meet the people from 
uh, I will meet Michael's relatives and they normally they wouldn't come to town on a Friday. They, they tend to go to town on a Saturday, you see, and I tend to go to town on a Friday. And you get a lot of people who will go to town on Wednesday and a lot of people go to town on a Friday and a lot of people on a Saturday. But on the fair day, they all tend to go on that one particular day. And it's, it is a day out and it is a day where you will spend the entire time talking to people really and meeting people that you haven't met since the previous month. It is a very cosmopolitan place because I, I think it's, it's the second largest uh, fishing port in Ireland, isn't it? And I mean, the whole area centres around, uh, around the fishing. All the young fellows, I mean, they have nothing else to do when they leave school. They'll either go fishing or stay on a farm. And I mean, the majority of them would go fishing. And of course, it is a cosmopolitan place in the point of view that last year we had all these Russians in for weeks and weeks on end. And they had the factory ships outside and they just came in and they were up and down the town and buying everything and anything that they couldn't get in Russia, you know, coffee, chocolate, chewing gum, silly things. A regular passenger and car ferry services the short trip between Bear Island and the mainland, but it is still an unfulfilled ambition of islands to visit the island. I often intend to go to the island, but I just never had any reason to go out there. When we have visitors down, I always say, you know, we, we, we usually say we must go to the island to go and pay a visit to them. We just never had any reason to go, and it's just a case of not getting it together to go. No particular reason why we didn't go. Looking over it, it looks enormous, and I, in, in actual fact, the only island I've ever been on is um, Garnish Island. I've never even been across to Darcy Island, the one near us. So I, I would like to go up there just to see, what's, see the layout of it. It's difficult to imagine what an island is like where you can drive cars there and have a hotel there. And, the priest over there, he keeps on inviting me over to the island and um, eventually I will go. I will definitely make the effort and go there, just to say I've been there anyway. I keep meaning to take the bicycles across there with the kids and cycle around the island. And every year I'm saying we will do it and every year we haven't done it yet. We will do it one day. Take the bikes off and cycle around there.